In 2020, I stepped into the gritty world of F&B. I have years of experience in front of the camera. But this is still relatively new to me. Since I've started CB Shook, I've sold over 5,000 packets of Mee Siam and Laksa. I want to take this further. So in this episode, I'll be consulting with culinary maestros. My first Nangka Rendang. Wow! In order to level up my cooking. I'm Terence Chow, and this is Dish Upon a Star. You'll find this Mee Siam on my online food platform, Sibei Show. Hi guys! Hello boss! Wow! I've roped in a few select partners into our business, including Edwin and Dawn. Every Thursday night, we set up a live stream to promote our products at CBA Show. So guys, pot over to CBA Show's Facebook page. Our live. Thanks for coming to my live. <laughs> we came together to start CBA Show was because, you know, um, in all my 30 years of acting, COVID has changed everything. Everything. Never stopped working for so long in my entire life. I feel that my life is wasted, doing nothing. We don't know when the next drama is going to start. So I told myself, we have to do something together. Peranakan dry mee siam is the first dish I sold. Live! Mee siam, everyone, every Singaporean should have eaten. But the dry mee siam is a little hard to find. It's more than a hundred year old recipe from my mom's great grandmother. Terence Chow as a chef is extraordinary. The first time I tried his cooking, it was the dry mee siam. If I can act half as good as he cooked, I'll be a damn good actor. That's a good sum up. Brilliant! Initially, we enjoyed the big hype, you know. Uh, we had one day 700 orders, you know. How to keep your customer coming back? Everybody is, you know, like trying to fight for that piece of pie. During phase two heightened alert, our business was affected by almost 60%. After phase two HA measures were lifted, more people wanted to dine out. So less people order online. Our business has to evolve, so we're going to launch our new dish. Peranakan Rendang. I'm learning it from the same person who taught me how to cook the dry mee siam, my mom. <laughs> Hello. Sorry, keep me waiting. Hi, guys. This is my mom, my boss. <laughs> I've always wanted to learn my mom's rendang recipe, but never had the time. Fresh coffee and leaves. Yeah, this one is very flavorful yeah, mm. for the rendang. The spice paste, or rempa itself, has almost 20 ingredients. You cannot shortcut. You know what's the most tedious part about my mom's rendang recipe? Making toasted grated coconut called curry sick. It has to be very slow heat. You cannot put on the heat uh, mm. very high. You mm. get burned easily. At least yeah. an hour. When I first asked my mom to learn her cooking, she told me, get out of the kitchen. <laughs> Why? I said, mom, I really want to learn. Then I managed to persuade her to teach me. It's cocoa heaven, thank mm. you, Ma. Mom. Sounds good, nah? Yeah, we're at the Rempa land already, Ma. Keep stirring. Mm. Four hours later, the rendang dish is finally ready. Take a look at this beautiful dish. Yeah. Come, try. Let's enjoy. Mm. 
Mm. Hits the spot every time. My mom's version is less sweet, more spicy, and then the rempa is dry, and you can see the grated coconut all clings onto the meat, and then the meat should be juicy and tender. So what is your plan? <clears throat> you want to, you know, cook this undang mm. to sell online? Yes. I think you can do it. I've given you the recipe. Lah. Mm. So now it's up to you to make it your own. Okay. Okay? Over the next few days, I will try to master my mom's rendang recipe and cook the dish for my business partners. If I fail, then I won't be able to convince them to add it to our menu. And that's just one part of the challenge. There's one big obstacle to selling rendang on Sibay Show. It's such a tedious dish to cook. Can I really stick to traditional ways of cooking if I want to sell it at scale? I'm getting tips from Chef Junrin. He's the second generation chef at Warong Nasi Pariaman and has been cooking rendang the traditional way just like his father used to. He sells about 100 servings of rendang beef every day. Okay, this is the traditional Anglo. We use with the charcoal. I've been using this for 30 over years. Anglo is a charcoal stove made of clay. Air enters through this hole, keeping the fire going. Cooking rendang on this takes more than four hours. Then you got to fan it. Now. <laughs> this, is the <laughs> this is the magic. Have you ever been tempted to go the easy way and use the gas burner, not the Anglo? We tried, we tried, but uh. I don't get what I expect. You know. With charcoal, you can play around with the fire. Yes, actually, I can smell the charcoal, the, yeah. the smokiness, yeah. right? If you give quality food, huh, people will eat it, they feel very good. Chef Jumrin cooks about 17 kilograms of rendang a day. The cooking time for such a large batch takes three times longer than cooking just a family sized portion. So to save time, Chef Jumrin blends his rumpa in bulk a month ahead. Founded in 1948, Warong Nasi Pariaman is one of the oldest nasi padang stalls. I've been a fan of their rendang for decades. Another regular is my friend Matthew Tan, a Peranakan cookbook author I've invited to join us for lunch. I mean, okay, since I've been coming here for the last 20 over 30 years, nothing will change. The flavour, it's so full. There's a very nice smoky flavour mm. in the beef rendang. You know, this beef rendang is traditional from the West Matra side. We call ourselves the Minyang Kabos. I learned from Jumrin that the Minang Kabaos are an ethnic group from West Sumatra, Indonesia. In the 1900s, they travelled across the Indonesian archipelago and Malaysia for work and trade. They would pack rendang for sustenance. Cooked over slow fire, beef rendang dries up, which allows it to be preserved for four to six weeks. That's why traditionally, Indonesian rendang beef is drier and chewier. But what about Peranakan Rendang? In the 1970s, mm. the first Peranakan cookbook that came out, mm. Rendang is there, but it's a very, very simple recipe. Mm. They dispense with all the leaves, yeah. like the turmeric leaves and that kind of things. Actually, my mum uh, puts a lot of all those leaves in. Every family has got a slight different recipes. Mm. So that is why when we talk about Peranakan cooking, uh, there's always this tendency when you say, it doesn't taste like my mother's cooking or my grandmother's cooking. Mm. So all this while, I thought my mum's way of cooking the rendang is the only Peranakan way to cook the rendang. Well, I'm wrong. Because ours, we use uh, the coconut flake, we use palm sugar and I realised this belongs uniquely to my family's heritage. So, same as Chef Jumrin, who's carrying on his father's legacy, well, my family's heritage recipe lies solely on my hands to carry it forward. One beef rendang. Yes. Thank you. The thing about rendang is, you can find it almost in any coffee shops or hawker centre. The competition is so stiff out there. So, how am I actually going to up the game?
Beef rendang. Selling a dish is a little like putting up a good show. It's the story behind it that can make us hooked. I want to dive deeper into the historical significance of rendang to market it better. So I reached out to a food historian, reviewer, and a fellow rendang fan, Tony Boy. And he arranges to meet me here. The reason why I bring you here, because this is the exact spot where Sir Stamford Raffles landed in Singapore in 1819. Here, the Sultan of Johor Riau received him. He hosted Raffles to a royal banquet. This is the spot where they had a banquet tent. During the feast, there are many different dishes, and Raffles was served the best of the special dish, which is deer rendang. You know rendang, even though it seems to be a very common dish today, it is actually a very special and significant dish to the Minangkabau people. The ingredients all have their meanings. The meat represents its leaders. The coconut represents its intellectuals, its uh, writers, poets. The chili represents its religious leaders. It is considered the head dish of the feast. Wow. I never really understood the cultural significance of rendang until today. Maybe I should introduce an elevated version of the rendang as a special dish on special occasions, such as Chinese New Year or weddings. Deer meat is a little too exotic, so I've got another premium meat in mind. A day room. I decided to pay my meat supplier a visit. I'm actually looking for some Wagyu beef. What do you have? Actually, I've prepared a few cuts of this Wagyu for you. Okay. Man, I'm freezing. <laughs> Minus 20. <laughs> My plan is putting together a heritage recipe together with a popular ingredient. So what would you recommend? I would recommend the A5 Wagyu chuck rolls for stewing as well as the uh, US strip loin. They are able to take in the heat better. The hallmark of a great piece of Wagyu lies in its marbling, the white streaks of fat in the lean meat. Visually, it's a looker. No, that's what I call ingredient fit for royalty. But it comes at a pricey sum too. The A5 Wagyu chuck rolls will be cost about $350 per kg. And for the US strip loin, it will be about $300 per kg. Nothing less than $300. Nothing less than $300. <laughs> Maybe $299. In the past, I've sold hot pots, roasted char siu, and I realised I couldn't use premium ingredients because of all the fixed costs, like your rentals, your manpower costs. Si Bei Shok has done away with all those as an online platform. So, we really want to explore using premium ingredients for our recipes. But here's the thing. These two packets are at least 600 grams, which means they are $200, which makes me think, how do I even price my Wagyu beef rendang? Lucky for me, I'm getting an inside scoop from Blue Ginger, an institution in Peranakan food that's been around for more than two decades. Table 10 and it's acha. Okay. Earlier in July, its second generation owner, Shikai, decided to spice things up with an all new Wagyu rendang dish. So what we have here is a chilled Wagyu shin meat from Australia. There's a very good mix of cartilage, fat and flesh. So it gets you a very good bite to it. And uh, it's not overpowering with the fat. How much is that Wagyu meat? It's about $23 per kilo. You know, the, the Japanese Wagyu is $350 per kilo and then Americans are $300 per kilo. <laughs> what was I thinking? That's why Australian shin. How does the process of making Wagyu rendang differ from the typical rendang? Wagyu typically has a more fat proportion as opposed to normal beef. Using a steam bake method, it actually extracts better flavour and don't have to worry about burning the premium meat. Ah, this is blue ginger secret. <laughs> There's a reason why shin meat is way cheaper. Best part. Oh. It's generally considered a tougher cut of meat, right? Come, 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 let's go. So I'm curious, does it still garner a premium taste? So we have our two versions of rendang here. One is our original rendang, one is our wagyu rendang. Have a taste. I won't tell you which is which. 
if I guess wrongly, that means I don't know my meat. <laughs> Your rumpa is very good. Thank you. A lot Is of gravy. Hey! No need to try it, man. This is not for my wagyu beef, man. As you can see, there's a very hey, drastic hey. difference. I didn't even have to taste it. Wagyu beef rendang. Wow. The texture is totally different. With the fat that you get from a wagyu cow, so you get a beefier taste and more um, flavorful as well. A rendang is a rendang. You can find it at um, a hawker centre, food court. Were you worried that your consumers will complain that it's too expensive? So, it is priced at $28, $6 more than our regular uh, rendang. But we don't want to be overcharging where people come in and like, oh, I don't want this because it's so expensive. Do you think it even has a chance in high-end dining market? Definitely. Um, I believe there's a trend that's moving towards People paying for a better flavour, something they've not experienced before. And we've actually sold out the first batch um, within a week and a half. The Australian Wagyu beef shin that I've eaten is a total game changer. It's a good reality check for me on price. And the best part about it is, you don't actually need to use the best grade or cut of Wagyu for rendang. There's still one last leg in my rendang journey. I'm going to taste a kind of rendang with an ingredient I've never tasted before. Looks exactly like the beef rendang, yeah. actually. Yeah. It's fantastic, Chef. Wow. And it's finally time to reveal my rendition of rendang to a panel of judges. Rendang has been around for over 100 years, but lately, to spice things up, F&B outlets are coming up with rendang in every possible shape and form. I want to be up to speed with this refreshing takes on rendang. It's time for me to start my rendang feast. Rendang curry puff. Ooh, this is so good. Beef rendang pizza. Ooh. Rendang meatballs. Mushroom rendang. Rendang burger. Kids, you will love this. Not spicy, very full. I had uh, six different kinds of rendang. And you know what? Three of them were actually meatless. Out of all the dishes, the mushroom rendang actually tasted best. Well, I never knew vegetarian rendang would taste so good and it makes me want to explore. Maybe I should serve it on Siwe Shuk too? Over 1 in 20 people in Singapore are vegan or vegetarians. Catering to them would help broaden my market base. I've looked up many versions of vegetarian rendangs online. There is one that I'm most curious to find out about. This looks like any ordinary rendang, except it's made with this secret ingredient, unripe jackfruit or nangka in Malay. Wow, chef! Hi, it smells so Cheers. good! And I only came to know of this dish through Chef Damien De Silva. Or you may know him as one of the judges in MasterChef Singapore. Why do we uh, only use the unripe jackfruit? Because rendang takes a very long time to cook. And if you use something that's ripe, it will probably shred in about half an hour. So when you're using jackfruit, you don't want spices that are too overwhelming. More subtle. Right? More subtle. Gentle. Yeah. yeah. Chef Damien is using a spice mix with about 18 spices like cardamom, fennel and cinnamon. The jackfruit is then left to simmer for 5 hours. Looks exactly like the beef and yeah. dung, actually. Yeah. Kind of. Let's try this now. It's ready. Oh, my first nangka rendang. Oh, chef. Wow, lemak. Confirm lemak. And you know what? The nangka, the jackfruit, actually, it's a bit sour. But the experience is not much difference from your beef rendang. You still have the very full bite to it. 
Just like all the other versions of rendang I've tried, Nangka rendang has a history as well. I didn't create it. Yeah, it's been around for like 300 over years. Right. I'm very fortunate okay. that granddad mm. uh, actually had Indonesian friends mm -hmm. and this has been passed down to me. I wanted to introduce this dish to the younger generation so that they know the rendang is not only about chicken and beef, mm. but it's a lot more as well. In the F&B world, I'm still a greenhorn. But Chef Damien Shikai and Uncle Jumrin have been living and breathing their craft for years. It's time for me to bring what I've learned from them to the table. I'm preparing two dishes, chicken rendang and wagyu beef shin rendang, both using my mum's original recipe. And I've got these discerning taste buds to impress. My other business partners, my friend Tony, and most importantly, my mum. Okay, and we're good to go. Okay, shall we try the chicken rendang? What do you think? Not too spicy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's everybody can enjoy it. So uh, and and I like the aromatic. Oh, the rempa is really very good yeah. because I can feel the texture. I think we need to know what yeah. Auntie thinks. Yeah. yeah. Whether you pass or not. Honestly, I think her I... comments is the most mm. crucial. Yeah. yeah. This chicken meat, no, it's very tender and juicy. Do you use a fresh coconut? Of course. The flavor, you know. It's so much better than mine. Because you're so generous with the coconut. Thank it's you, thank you. Man. Highest level of praise, really. yeah. better than mum's yeah. cooking. Yes. Eh. Next, we have the Wagyu beef rendang. Solid. Very nice. In fact, I like it better than, than the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you expensive taste, eh? Hello, this Wagyu beef. <laughs> <Yeah, expensive laughs> <taste, yeah. laughs> It's really, really good, no? serious. I've only thought to you about preparing the chicken rendang. Mm. Then now you come up with the wangyu beef rendang. Really, I'm so, so proud of you. I'm so <laughs> proud of you, yeah. Let me tell you, hearing all this feedback made me feel so happy and humble. I'm glad I did my mom's recipe justice. But what I've learned is selling a dish goes beyond just perfecting its recipe. What inspired me most from the chefs I met was the way they preserved traditional flavours from their childhood while pushing boundaries at the same time. I'm excited to see what other renditions of rendang I can offer. <laughs>